of people who have platforms and power to speak but are afraid mm -hmm. to use those platforms for fear of their board, their shareholders, or the public, you know, getting canceled. What's your advice to those people who have the power and platform mm -hmm. to speak but aren't doing Jimmy, so? Jimmy, can you repeat the question? Yes, so Maggie has a question about um, people who are who have platforms with which to speak, but there's concerns in an increasingly divided culture, um, in a culture of cancellation, um, and also, I think, you know, just increasingly fraught climate on social media. What advice do you have for people who want to take the lead, be a part, active participant in conversations, who are feeling um, as if maybe pressure to stay silent? Is that what you're saying, too? Or, or a CEO who can speak out in favor of mm -hmm. equality, mm -hmm. reproductive freedom, but has a board <clears throat> or shareholders, and they feel hamstrung strong and yes. maybe offering reproductive rights to their employees or yes. coming out with a statement. Mm -hmm. So yes, people okay. feeling fear around speaking yeah. truth to power yeah. um, because they don't have the institutional support to, to do so too. The, I would give that, uh, there's actually two sides to the answer that I would like to give to that. One part of it is that we have a job to do. Mm. We have to let them know that they are supportive. We have to let them know that we will buy their products and services. Uh, we have to we have to be organized and we have to speak up if they are willing to actually take a stand we need to be prepared to support them in that and I think too often we're too quiet mm. uh, about it because that's just the nature of our beast you know we're kind of like you know live and let live folks and and we, we, we need to be proactive about it and there I will I will do a quick plug for one of our partner organizations gender fair that is that actually can tell us all where to spend our money mm. uh, with, with with companies that actually do have family friendly policies that actually do support the causes we support and I think that's the kind of thing that we need to do to systematize it so that people can easily find out um, where should I be where should I be spending my money and that's what talks that's mm. what ultimately talks um, the other thing that is important is the uh, flip side of that coin is for the, it, it, there's hardly a company that can get away with not taking positions on things today. Now they might've been able to get, to get away with that, you know, 50 years ago when they would say the business of business is business and they didn't, they didn't take positions on any of these things. The, the employees today expect the companies they work for to have some kind of ethical positions. And, and, and they're going to be paying attention to it. And so do shareholders and so do, so do uh, customers. So I think it's, uh, so, cus so companies and organizations and individuals can no longer just shy away from taking positions because they're going to be called to, to task by somebody at some point. And so if they're going to be called to task by somebody at some point, they had better figure out which side of history they want to be on. Mm -hmm. And they better look at the data that says, oh, 90 some odd percent of Americans use birth control. Oh, 90 some odd percent of Americans support the Equal Rights Amendment. Oh, how about that? You know, they, they, need to, they need to not listen to just the loud voices. They need to actually figure out where they wanna stand.